And I'm gonna plant a native plant. It's a dogwood, an American dogwood, and it's called Appalachian Snow. And it's a sort of a new variety that they figured out is really healthy and is not gonna fall victim to some of the disease that our American dogwoods have. And if you can see this container, it's basically a bucket. And you'll see a lot of people dig a hole exactly the shape of the bucket. That is the first mistake you could make. You need to make a bowl, not a straight down hole. Interesting fact, most trees die within seven years after you bring them home from the nursery. So it's right to get it right when you plant a tree. So I dug a, a hole that's a bowl. It's much wider and it's scooped down. Then the next thing is you wanna make sure that the hole is not too deep. There's a saying that says, um, plant a tree low and it won't grow, plant a tree high and it will reach the sky or something. So if I just took the tree out of the bucket, I've cut it from the back with a nice sharp knife. So the tree came up to here in the bucket. If we put it in to the hole, we notice that it's, it's just about right. So you have to add good soil and mix it with the old soil. So what I'm doing here, this nice black stuff, compost, and I'm just gonna add a bunch, and then I'm gonna just kinda mush it around. If you say it in Spanish, it's mezclar la tierra, por favor. That's the only Spanish I know, but I do like that expression. I added maybe, maybe an inch. Can you see these roots? See how they've gone around and around? If I just put this in the hole, the roots are never going to venture out. So you have to encourage these roots, and I do it just, believe it or not, this is being gentle, doing that. And you just come down with a rake, and you kind of tease the roots away from the sides. And I'm gonna do that probably four or five different cuts around the edge. But now the problem is, the flare. This tree has a wiggle here because it's probably grafted, it's how they're growing things, that's fine. But the flare, which is when the tree goes out, you know when a kid draws a tree, they, they draw it like that? If you go to an, any parking lot right now, Market Basket or a movie theater, I bet you will not be able to see a single flare of a tree that's been planted in a corporate situation because it's planted too deeply, and then they do that horrible volcano mulch thing. So if you see a tree like this, without a flare, it's already too deep. So now what I do is I take the top, and I somewhat gently move the mulch and the top, there's fertilizer and whatever else is on here, and I very gently dig until I can find the flare which I just did. So I don't know if you can see that. It's a small tree. So the flare isn't, you know, huge. But that's the top of the tree right there. The most important thing is you don't bury that under soil. You don't bury it under mulch. It's gotta be at the top. So I've put this in and now I'm gonna just take some flat surface-ish, okay? This is the top of the dirt, but this doesn't take into account mulch. It's too low. So I, this tells me I need to put more compost under. You start mixing the old soil with the new. And of course you wanna spend a minute, make sure your tree is straight. So now basically I'm filling the hole and the reason to add compost and the old soil is that if you add just compost, the roots will go out into the compost, but then they'll reach the wall of the container that you essentially made out of the old soil and they won't go further. So that's another sort of trick and really important reason to add old soil with new compost. And while I'm adding compost, I'm gonna talk about it. Don't bother with, with peat moss. You don't need any of it. All you need is compost. 
when you've got the hole, you know, half full, it's time to water. Basically, you put it on a trickle, you leave it, you let this fill up. And then you turn it off and you, you let it go down. If for some reason the water doesn't drain, pretty much plant it in clay, which is another reason why you have to add compost because it really makes um, the earth more like a sponge. Now, if this was a B&B, &B, I would turn the water on full pressure and I'd be washing the clay away from the stem of the plant, but it's not. And remember, we found the flare. You can really see it. Anyway, so you leave the water again until the water fills up, then you let it drain, and then we're gonna fill the hole back up again. It's time to fill the hole up now. And as I go, I'm going to um, straighten the tree. And when you straighten the tree, uh, it's important to look at it from a couple of different angles. So I just continue throwing the old soil and the compost. Every now and then it's going to shift and you want to just check it. I have a nice bucket of compost here. You just want to punch the soil down with your hand. There might still be water there, so it's a process. And I'm pretty much following the outline of the, uh, you know, of the root ball. You don't have to stomp up here. This is the plant, but this is where the hole is. So then you go around. And ah, now I just found a big pocket and I shifted the tree. So now I have to make sure the tree is straight because if you don't do it now, you're going to regret it when it's too late and you can't move it. Well, I'm going to wait, let the water seep down a little bit more. I'm going to come back and check this probably in an hour and then I'm going to compost it. Uh, I'm going to mulch it. It's pretty upright, like, um, you know, like a pretty vase of flowers. It'll grow up and then as it gets older, it'll grow out. Of course, this will get wider, but it's a single stem tree. It's not a shrub form. Um, it will make white flowers in the spring that are beautiful. And then little red berries in the fall that are lovely, but they won't last very long because birds and squirrels will eat them. Okay, so a couple of things to consider when you are purchasing a tree and then when you're figuring out where to put it. If you don't have a design and you're, you know, sort of looking for a place, just remember that a tree, this little sweet tree, is going to end up being 20 feet tall with a 15 to 20 foot spread up in the sky. So if I put this tree next to my front door, it would look so cute right now and then it would be a nightmare. And by the time it became a nightmare, I wouldn't be able to move it. So I would have to cut it or prune it so that it becomes completely misshapen. So remember that the whole beauty of being a gardener is you get the instant gratification of planting something, and then you get the long gratification of watching it grow, as long as it's in the right place. Uh, and then the second thing, when you're looking for a tree, you wanna look for its health. You want to make sure that there aren't any scars on the skin of the tree, on the wood. You want to make sure that there aren't sort of a lot of tangled branches on the inside. If there are and you can prune them, that's great. But if it's misshapen on the inside, it's going to be misshapen forever. You want to look for a strong leader if it's a single stem tree, meaning it's standing up nice and straight. And then you want to just make sure that there's lots of green, that it's not dead. And I don't mean the color green, I mean the feel of the, if there's life, and there is in this. If you look closely, you can see lots of little buds, the next leaves, and you can even see the flowers on this. Um, so that's what you're looking for. And then uh, just remember, place it carefully, put it down, walk away, look around, spend the night, come and look at it the next day, really think it through before you do the hard work of putting it in the ground. 
and then you have a tree that you get to enjoy for hopefully the rest of your life. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Happy spring. <laughs>